All right, so remember on this first page, you only need to uh, do two problems, but I went ahead and did all six since you picked the two that you're gonna do. Uh, fast forward to whatever parts you need to watch or check in the video um, and check the problems that we did or assigned to ourselves in class today. And if you need to check any problems that were not assigned or are not given solutions in this video, please come to tutoring in the morning and you can check my key then. So let's go ahead and start with question one. Uh, this is in standard form, so if it were me, I'm just going to do the cover-up method. I'm going to get that x is less than 2. I know that's going to be an x-intercept, and we're going to go to the left. The other option is negative 2y is less than 2. When I divide by negative 2, that's going to flip the symbol around, so y is greater than negative 1. Greater than is going to be above or up. Um, so I'm going to plot my two intercepts, so the x-intercept is at 2. The y-intercept is at negative 1. I know that this is a dashed line, and so you will you can use a ruler in class tomorrow to make this line actually straight, and then I want to shade to the left and up, which happens to be on this side of the line. All right, question two, uh, similar. This is one, so the problem is if I try to set this up, 6x is greater than or equal to negative 3, that's going to give me a fraction, so instead of doing intercepts this time, I'm going to solve that for y. So I'm going to subtract 6x. It's going to give me y is greater than or equal to uh, negative 6x minus 3. So I'm going to start at negative 3. I don't have room to go down 6 into the right one, so I'm going to go up 6 into the left one. This is a solid line, so I'm going to connect that solid. And then this says y is greater than, which means to shade up or above. So that's going to be on this side over here. Questions three and four. Both of these are in slope-intercept form, so that's pretty nice. Y equals negative two is just a line that cuts through negative two on the y-axis, and this is going to be a dashed line. And then uh, less than is going to be below, so I'm just going to shade below here. Question number four, y-intercept is three. Slope of negative 4 over 5, remember that negative only goes in one place, so I'm going to go down 4, but I need to go to the right 5. If I had room, I would go up 4 and to the left 5. This is a solid line because it's less than or equal to, so make sure you remember those for tomorrow. And then this is y is less than, and less than is supposed to make you think to shade below, so I'm going to shade below that line. And then five and six, don't let five trick you. Remember, if there's an X and a Y, then the line they're giving you is going to be in slope-intercept form. So, and we're looking for a diagonal line, not a vertical or horizontal line if we have Y and X. So this is gonna be Y equals one X plus zero. So I'm gonna start at zero, use a slope of one, rise one, run one, uh, down one to the left one. And this says greater than, so that means I'm gonna have a dashed line going all the way through. And then greater than is gonna be above, so I'm gonna shade um, on this side. And then six, x is uh, greater than or equal to negative two. So x lines run through, cut through the x-axis. It's a dashed line, because it's just a strict inequality. And then we're gonna be shading greater than, so that's gonna be to the right. All right, so seven and eight are asking you to write the inequality. That means you need to come up with not an equation, but an inequality to match what you're seeing. So uh, I think that I have these shaded right. Uh, remember, it didn't copy quite correctly. So uh, on seven, I know that if this is a dashed line, it's either going to be greater um, than or less than. And now I need to think about that's a line that's cutting through the y-axis only. So that's y is comparing to positive 3. Since it's shading below, that means I'm going to choose this less than symbol. So my equation, or sorry, inequality rather, is y is less than 3. Question number 8, so similar, I know this is a solid line, so that's going to give me greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. And since it's shaded above, I can actually already pick that now. I know it's going to be greater than or equal to. So I just need to write uh, my equation. I see that this has a y-intercept of 5, and if I find another good point, I see that that's down 3 over 1, so that's going to give me an inequality y is greater than or equal to negative 3x because the slope is down 3 over 1 plus 5 because that's the y-intercept. Questions 9 and 10, solve each system by graphing. Uh, we didn't actually do any of these, so if you do any of these just for extra practice, you can come check the key tomorrow. 
the same for 13 through 16, since we didn't actually um, assign any of those since you did the worksheet. If you need to come check those, you can do that tomorrow. And then 17 and 18 here. 17 says, which one has no solution? This is what you practiced in the IXL. Remember, no solution is going to look like um, two parallel lines, and we know lines are parallel when they have the same slope. So uh, to me, that, that already eliminates A and B because those don't have the same slopes. C and D both have the same slopes, but C has the same y-intercept. That means that's the exact, this is the exact same line, which is going to be an example of infinite solutions. So what I'm looking for is D here. That's going to be no solution. And then 18... This just says name two solutions and non-solutions. Uh, it should say for the graph below. Um, remember, solutions are listed as ordered pairs, x comma y. Anything that's in this shaded area is going to be solutions. And then anything in the not shaded area are obviously going to be non-solutions. And the thing you have to remember is that if points are on dashed lines, they're going to not be solutions. Um, if they're on a solid line, they count, but dashed lines are non-solutions. So you should have four ordered pairs named for that question. And then on the word problems, if you want to check the answers for 13 through um, 16, you are welcome to come in in the morning or ask for the key at the beginning of class to check those. Um, but I am going to go ahead and talk about 17 and 18 since I pointed those two out. So remember 17, uh, we're writing the two equations and we're defining the two variables. So 17 has um, a total of 235. We're talking about nickels and dimes. We gave a strategy in class and said it might help to write how much a nickel is and a dime is so you don't forget that to use those numbers. And it says she has 33 um, coins in total. So the first equation most of you I think are probably going to write is x plus y equals 33, where x stands for the number of nickels and y stands for the number of dimes. And then... Uh, then we need to use the money part of it. So a nickel is five cents each, so that's 0.05x, plus a dime is 10 cents each, so 0.10y equals 235. And we said in class you want to make sure that you keep those decimal places so that you don't forget that you're talking about cents and not whole dollars. All right, this next question, this last question, is actually talking about an inequality, which we haven't spent a ton of time on, um, but you might see tomorrow on your test, if nothing else, in a... Um, extra credit question. So it says the softball coach is purchasing equipment for the team. He can spend no more than, so that's less than or equal to, three hundred and uh, sorry, $530. Uniforms are 45 each and bats are 22 each. All right, so that's going to be, I'm going to call that 45x, that's a rate, plus 22y is no more than, that's less than or equal to, 530. And I want to say that x stands for the number of uniforms, and that Y stands for the number of bats. All right, so that's going to give me one of my inequalities. Remember, two variables means two equations or two inequalities. So the last one says I need to buy at least 15 pieces of equipment. So that's the number of uniforms plus the number of bats needs to be at least, that's greater than or equal to, 15 pieces of equipment. And that's um, the inequality for that problem.